Hey everybody, Zach again, NewTutor.com, coming in and making a video for you today. I thought something was really interesting this week and I wanted to share it with you. I saw this article, again, we're talking about Zero Hedge here, two times in a row on the videos. Um, uh, Mexican Congress debates monetization of the Libertad silver ounce. I thought this was extraordinary when I saw it because nobody's doing this anymore. And what this means is actually a return to biblically based money, a biblically based system of money, an honest weight and an honest measure. So you have these Libertad silver ounces. I don't own any, but I own other types of ounces of silver. And if you, I mean, they're marked an ounce. Okay, that's an honest weight because you can anyone can get a scale, a digital scale, whatever, and you can weigh that and confirm that it is one actual ounce. Okay, that is the biblical definition of money right there. And the article is like Mexican uh, Congress debates monetization of the Libertad silver ounce, and it, and the article talks about how uh, representatives in the Mexican government and their Congress um, are, are debating uh, the ability of allowing, putting these back into circulation and promoting them as, as in circulation so that people can store up wealth in the form of the Mexican silver Libertad. And, um, you know, so when the pesos rise or fall, uh, the Libertad will not fall any more than what actually the price of metal is. And actually, uh, by determined by the government be worth an actual an extra 10% of pesos uh, based on whatever the you know the price of silver is so um, I mean they're basically you know saying okay this is what an ounce of silver wor is worth it's based on the market and um, you know there you go <clears throat> and, they're, and they're maybe encourage their uh, uh, citizens to buy into it and to hold it for value this is again the definition of biblical money and um, so basically, the first time silver is mentioned is in Genesis chapter 13. And Abraham was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. Uh, you know, that was money back in the day, cattle, silver, and gold. You know, still can, I mean, still is real money today. Uh, these are commodities. These are things that are always sought after. Why cattle? Because it can be used for so many things, including food and clothing and so many other things. And then silver and gold, which has always had value, you know, never been worth zero. Um, there's always somebody who will happily trade you for it. Um, you're never going to find, uh, not find anyone who, who won't take you know, silver and gold. And so, um, you know, it's the first time it's mentioned in Scripture, but, you know, where I usually go to in Scripture is this right here. Deuteronomy 25, 14, Thou shalt not have in thy house diverse measures, great and small. You shall not have in your house diverse measures, great and small. What does that mean? You're like, what is that? I don't understand. We well, see, a long time ago, people had these scales, uh, kind of like this one here, this scale. The scale, um, this, is, this is how people used to trade and do commerce. You, you would go into somewhere and you would buy something and they would weigh out whatever silver you had because they didn't have perfect coinage back then, you know, way back during this time. Even 100 years ago, you know, people traded with gold dust or gold nuggets or pieces of silver that had been melted down on their own and into like these little chunks. And that's what they would trade with. And you'd measure out your silver or your gold with one of these scales. And you had on the other side of the scale, uh, a series of weights like these. So these weights here were kind of what were used on the other side. So you had, let's say a weight with an inscription, you know, saying it was worth a value of one ounce. And so you would, on the other side of the scale, you'd put one ounce of your gold or one ounce of your silver, and that's how you knew how much you had. Or it'd be, it'd be less like grams or a tenth of a gram or, you know, you know, different weights, right? Well, when it's talking about in Scripture, in chapter Deuteronomy 25, uh, verse 14, you shall not have in your house diverse measures, great and small. It's talking about dishonest because the very next verse, let's read that, Deuteronomy 25, 15, but you shall have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shall you have that the days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God gives you. The days may be lengthened. See, this is a really important part that some people just skip right over, that your days may be lengthened. Why may your days be lengthened? If you don't have these dishonest and unperfect weights and measures, let me give you a scenario. So let's just say you're a farmer of sheep and you're a sheep farmer. And it, every year you take a cattle drive or you're a cattle rancher or whatever. And you take a cattle drive to where the buyers are because that's how it worked. The buyers would meet in a certain spot and all the sheep farmers or cattle farmers would come to them and they would pay them for whatever, you know, however the, many their flock was, or if they were shearing their animals for sheep, they would pay for the wool, but they would basically come to the buyers. The buyers meet in a certain, certain spot and you go to them. 
So you go to your buyer, you go to your cattle drive and there's a number of buyers there all meeting in one spot and you choose a buyer. This guy, you know, he's a little different. You know, he, he hasn't been here in, in years past. So, you know, you, you go try him out and you, and you check out and you see uh, what he's got and he offers you a price and, you know, for your sheep and you agree on a price and then he pulls out his scale and then he pulls out his weights. His weights are not legitimately marked. So these weights, you know, that he pulls out, they're marked, they're marked a certain way, but they actually weigh less than what they're marked. So let's just say it's an ounce. Let's just say you settle on a deal of 50 ounces of silver for your sheep. And he pulls out a, a weight that's marked 50 ounces. Okay? And he puts it on his scale. However, the weight actually weighs, oh, I don't know, 47.5 ounces. Okay? And then he pulls out his silver to pay you for the sheep you've just sold him. And he only has to count out 47 and a half ounces of silver because you think he's counting out 50 ounces of silver because that's what the weight on the other side of the scale says. And then you go on your way. You take the 47 point and a half ounces of silver and you go on your way and you go to the next town. And, you know, you're, you're happy that you sold your flock. And then, you know, as you're, you know, spending your silver, you're, you're realizing it's not going as far as it used to. And let's just say you weigh it, you know, when you get home because you have a scale at home, whatever, and you find out, you know, you're, you're miles away from, you know, the buying place now and you find out that your silver doesn't weigh 50 ounces. This guy ripped you off. What do you do? What do you do? You go back the next year and you're looking for some payback or maybe, you know, because he's long gone now because the buying sale is over. And so you go back the next year and he's not there. Why? Because he ripped everyone off that he was selling to you know, or buying from that year. So he's gone, you know? And so, you know, you and your other com compadres are sitting around the campfire lamenting the fact that the guy who ripped you off the year before. And, you know, somebody comes into the group and says, hey, that guy who ripped us all off the year before, he's two towns over selling his uh, buying sheep again this year from other people. Let's go pay that guy a visit. And so you get up on your horses and you go pay that guy a visit and his days are not lengthened in the land you know, you're wanting some payback. You know, that guy, you know, you don't rip people off and expect your days to be lengthened in the land because someone's going to find you, understand what you did to them, rip them off, and they're going to pound you into the dust. That's what they're going to do. And so that's why the Bible, our father, he tells us, you know, in scripture to make sure your weights are honest and just. Don't even have those other ones in your house. Because it, I know it's tempting. It's tempting, you know, to be able to use something that's just a little bit off so you get a little bit of a gain. And you may speculate, oh, you know, it's okay. You know, it's, it's the handling fee, you know. <laughs> it's the shipping and handling fee of me being, you know, be, yeah, it's an extra, a little bit extra for me. No, you lied to people because your weights are not honestly marked. And by doing so, your days are not going to be lengthened in the land. Likewise, with gold and silver. You know, you start using an honest weight and measure, an ounce. This is an ounce of silver. Make sure you can see this. An ounce of silver from Cornerstone Mint. You can see that. Get that to focus. Focus, yeah. It's got Haggai 2.8 on it. It's got a picture of a lion on it. Yeah, you can see that, right? Cornerstone Mint. And uh, I just got this because I sold some of my, um, I made a sale on my website to a, a gentleman. And um, he uh, purchased some of our things on our American Homestead website, our USB drive and some other things. And he paid for it in two silver ounces and two copper ounces right there. And um, so it's an honest weight measure. It says one ounce. One troy ounce, 9999 fine silver. One ounce. And if you take us on a scale, it'll measure out one ounce. So, I mean, that's how, that's, a, that's the way it used to be, you know. And when governments return from this, they can see the blessings of that because people, it, it, will, it will benefit their economy to move to something that's backed by actual precious metals. I mean, this is strategically smart move for Mexico to do this. A hundred years ago, our country got off uh, precious, or started to move off precious metals. It didn't happen fully until like 1964, 63, I think, 64. And if you take a look at this, this is something really interesting you might like. I've shown this on videos before, but this is 
um, a denarius and a silver dime next to each other. So on the left there, you see a silver denarius, about 2,000 years old. And you see the crack going through it. That's because when I got it, silver, when it's over 1,000 years old, can become brittle. And it broke, and I super glued it back. <laughs> but that's a silver denarius, approximately 2,000 years old. It's the same size as a modern-day dime. Modern-day dime. That's a, that's a, uh, it's a, it's, I forgot what kind of dime that's called. Mercury dime. It's also silver. They, they have almost the same amount of silver inside of it. So a silver denarius is the same size as a silver dime. Now, if you go back to, it's Matthew chapter 20, verse 2, you will see that in the story that our Messiah gave, he said that a man was paid a silver denarius. Some, in some versions it says a penny, but in the Greek it's denarii. denarii it, that's what that is, a denarius right there. A silver denarius for a day's wage. You work all day long, and at the end of the day, that's what you get. A silver denarius. Okay? In the 1900s, a factory worker working in almost any factory in America uh, was paid a dime, a silver dime, for a day's wage. Right there. Silver dime for a day's wage. That's what you were paid. I hope that's going to focus again. But that, I mean, that's 2,000 years of history. From Matthew chapter 20, verse 2 to today, that's what a day's wage was. You know, I'm sorry, well, 100 years ago. You know, 1900s. A day's wage. One silver dime. A dime's worth of silver. And in 19, was it 1914 or whatever it was, Woodrow Wilson basically destroyed it all. You know, he let the Federal Reserve come in, and it was all downhill from there. And we eventually got rid of silver um, completely in the 1960s. And our country, look at our national debt. Just this last week, folks, we have surpassed $20 trillion in debt. There's no recovering from that. It's because we have forsaken the benefits of following the Father's Word. Um, you know, you can say what you want about the founders of our country. Um, and, you know, some of those things may be accurate. But if you actually go to the U.S. Constitution, it says, this is from the Heritage Guide to the Constitution, it says, the states are not permitted to coin money, emit bills of credit, or make anything but gold and silver coin a tender and payment of debts. You see, originally, we were not supposed to use, we were, the only thing we were supposed to use was gold and silver coin. You know, you weren't supposed to issue bills, I mean, because it was going rampant and it was getting out of control back then. And so when they developed the U.S. Constitution, they're like, you know what, we needed only silver and gold. Only things that are marked, okay? And because silver and gold back then was marked with what its weight was, and you knew what its weight was based on its circulation. We all knew, everyone knew what, what it was worth and what it weighed. And so you could pay, you know, a $20 silver gold piece or whatever because you knew how much gold was in it. It was, it was you know, static, not dynamic. It didn't change. And so that's what we were supposed to do. And we've gotten away from that. And you see today uh, the curse of that. $20 trillion in debt. No, there's no way we're, we're going to recover from that. Um, I mean, we'd have to seriously repent as a nation and, and go back that way, but it's not going to happen. Um, so, you know, what do you do? I, I, mean, I tell people, you know, you need to buy gold and silver. Everyone knows, you know, I'm on the crypto train. Everyone likes, I, I, I like cryptos. I mean, you know, the issue with cryptos is that you can't hold, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Um, it's not really fiat, but it does have some things, you know, related to fiat, meaning that it, there is no intrinsic value for cryptocurrency. And, and the other problem I have with it, too, is that people are trying to buy cryptocurrencies instead of earning it. You don't go out and try to buy U.S. dollars, do you? No, you go out and you earn U.S. dollars. You have a job. You, know, you, earn, you, you make a living. You make, you make goods or services, and you trade those goods and services for your dollars. For, you do the same thing for cryptos. Otherwise, you're just gambling. And I'm not a gambler. I don't, I don't believe in gambling. So, um, you know, it's, silver is something that's always been money. Um, it's never going to be worth zero. And the difference between that and cryptos is if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Um, there is no real intrinsic value to cryptos. The only real benefit to cryptocurrencies is the fact that, it, number one, it can't be manipulated. It can't be printed into oblivion. It's decentralized, so the government can never control it, and it's private. Um, there, there are, there's no way in some of these cryptos that anyone can ever find out how much you, how much you own of it. Whereas that's completely different from fiat because the government wants to know everything about the money you hold and how, what you're spending it on and how much you have and where you're keeping it and all that stuff. And in cryptocurrencies, that is impossible for them to do. 
that's why people like it so much. Um, and that's why I, I, I like it as a currency. I'd use that over U.S. dollars any day of the week if I could. Um, but real, what, real, what is real money? What always will be real money is this. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. Um, and I thought it was a great perspective on looking at it from a biblical point of view. You know, what is biblical money? And, you know, people have asked about these videos. They wanted me to do videos on this. And here it is. This is the one I'm doing. I think I've done these before. But Deuteronomy 25, 13, when it talks about honest wage and honest measures, I was shocked. I was shocked, ladies and gentlemen, to see Mexico, Mexico, you know, riding the ship on this one and and actually thinking and in terms of silver, their silver coinage as actual money again, because that's what it is. And um, who knows? Maybe they'll see some benefit to this because, you know, so many of our countries now in the West especially have gotten off that and are seeing the debt pile up. And, and it was the exact same reason, you know, the founders didn't want us issuing notes of debt uh, in the Constitution and using only gold and silver because of the amount of debt that would follow and that we're buried underneath it. So anyway, interesting article. I saw that and I wanted to point it out because when I see something like that biblical and I see someone turning back to something biblical, it blows my stack because that's not the day and age we live in. But that's what I'm seeing this week, at least from Mexico. Who knows if it'll pass? They're debating it now. We'll have to wait and see. But I thought it interesting. I thought I'd share it with you. All right, guys, go home, read your Bible. Thanks. 